All right, in this video, we're going over 8-1, the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. All right, so the Pythagorean Theorem we know is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, that is the Pythagorean Theorem. All right, and we end the Pythagorean Theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared can only be used in right triangles. Okay, A and B are the two legs of the triangle, and C is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. And in a right triangle, it will always be the longest of the three sides. So if I gave you, if I said a triangle has sides 3, 4, and 5, you would know that 5, since it's the largest number, is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. All right, so how do we use this to find the hypotenuse? Well, here we have a triangle with sides 20 and 21, and we're going to solve for C. So we're going to set it up 20 squared plus 21 squared equals C squared. All right. We know that 20 squared is 400. And 21 squared is 441, and that equals c squared. So that's 841 equals c squared. And then, of course, you've got to take the square root of both sides. So c equals 29. All right, that's how, you, that's how you're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. If you're looking for the hypotenuse, square the two legs, add them together, Take the square root of both sides, and that gives you your hypotenuse. All right? Now, what happens, though, if you don't have one of the sides? We have one side, the hypotenuse, and we're missing the other side. Well, we're still going to use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, 8 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. All right? Now, what we can do, well, let's go ahead and 8 times 8 is 64, plus x squared equals 20 squared is 400. Now, subtract the 64 from both sides. So, x squared equals 336. Now, take the square root of both sides. So, x equals 4 times the square root of 21. All right, because that's what that simplest radical form of the square root of 336. So as you can see, we still use the Pythagorean theorem, except for in solving for c squared, we solved for, I'm going to call it b squared. Okay. So it works the same way, except you're going to end up subtracting one of the numbers from here to this side before you take your square root but it still works the same way. The principle is the same, it's just your variable is on the other side of the equal sign. All right? if, I, if I needed to solve for this side, the x would have just came first. And it doesn't matter if you call this a, side A and this side B, or this side B and this side A. That doesn't matter. The important one is C. C has to be on the hypotenuse. A and B are interchangeable, but C has to be the hypotenuse. All right? Now, there's these things called Pythagorean triples. What a Pythagorean triple is, it's any three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. What do I mean by that? Well, here's some examples. 3, 4, 5 is your most common example. Because 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. See, 9 plus 16 equals 25. That's a Pythagorean triple because it's three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. All right. So another Pythagorean triple is 6, 8, 10. If you notice, all I did was took these three numbers, multiply them all by 2 to get this one. This is still a Pythagorean triple. All right. Because it's still in the ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. Remember we just got done doing ratios? If, if the sides of a triangle are in the ratio 3 to 4 to 5, then it is a right triangle, and therefore its sides 
form a Pythagorean triple. This one I just multiplied these by three, and this one I multiplied them by a fraction. It doesn't matter what you multiply by, as long as you multiply all three numbers by the same number, what you end up with is still gonna be a Pythagorean triple. A way to tell if numbers are Pythagorean triple, take the two smallest, square them, add them together, make sure it equals the sum, make sure it equals the largest one squared. Like for instance, nine, 12, 15, if we weren't sure, we could do 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. So 9 squared is 81 plus 12 squared is 144. 15 squared is 225. Add these together. 225 equals 225. Check mark. That means 9, 12, 15 is a Pythagorean triple. Okay, this is a vocab word, so make sure you write this down. Pythagorean triple, any three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. And here's four examples. All right. Now, you can also use the Pythagorean theorem to see if a triangle you're given is a right triangle or not. All right. So here's an example. Here's a triangle with sides 13, 84, and 85. And we need to see, is this a right triangle? How do we know it's a right triangle? Well, a squared plus b squared is going to have to equal c squared. Okay? c is always, 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 always the largest of the three numbers. 85 is the largest. That is side c. Now, the other ones are a and b. And remember, a and b are interchangeable. doesn't matter which one you call a, which one you call b. As long as your longest side is always C, all right? So now let's plug this in. 13 squared plus 84 squared will have to equal 85 squared in order for this to be a right triangle. If this satisfies, this is a right triangle. If this doesn't work, this is not a right triangle. All right, so 13 squared is 169 plus 84 squared, which is 7,056, and that needs to equal 85 squared, which is 7,225. All right, well, add these two together. What do you get? In fact, you get 72,025, or 7,225. Since that checks out, that means our triangle here is a right triangle. All right, it is a right triangle. Triangle. So if I called this angle A, angle B, and angle C, triangle A, B, C is a right triangle. Okay? Why? Because A squared plus B squared equaled C squared. That's what we proved here. Since this worked, this is a right triangle. If this hadn't worked, this would not be a right triangle, all right? Now, going on the lines of if this hadn't worked, okay? Because we know if it works, it's a right triangle. But if it doesn't work, we can still determine something about the triangle, all right? We can use it to determine if a triangle is, ac is acute, right, obtuse, or right. Okay, our first example, if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then of course it's a right triangle. But if c squared is bigger than a squared plus b squared, all right, that means it's an obtuse triangle. If c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it's an acute triangle. And remember, c is always... the longest side, all right? C is always, 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 always the longest side, okay? So let's look at one more example and we're gonna call this video finished. Here is your last example. A triangle has side length six, 11, and 14. Is it acute? obtuse or right. So we need to do a squared plus b squared 
I'm going to draw a box, and we need to see if it's if this is greater than c squared, less than c squared, or equal to c squared. All right. So we have six squared plus eleven squared something to fourteen squared. Thirty-six plus one twenty-one. 196, all right, so 6 and 1 is 7, 3 and 2 is 5, and then 1, and then 196. As you can see here, c squared is larger, all right, since c squared is larger, that means our triangle is obtuse, okay, triangle is obtuse, all right, because c squared, because remember going back to the last one, c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, so that means the triangle is obtuse, all right, if it had been the other way around where c squared was less than a squared plus b squared, then of course it would have came out to have been acute, or if it, both sides would have equaled, of course it would have been a right triangle. Okay, so this has been your Pythagorean Theorem and it's Converse video 8-1. You can watch this as many times as you need to. Make sure you know what a Pythagorean triple is. Make sure you know how to use the Pythagorean Theorem. And make sure you know how to determine whether a triangle is acute, obtuse, or right using the three side lengths, as we just did. Okay, so watch this as many times as you need to. Make sure you have that stuff written in your notes. See you tomorrow.